Teresa, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. I've had a lot of new subscribers recently and I'm very grateful for you all coming along. If you're one of my regulars, well, welcome back. It's always nice to see you here again and I do enjoy seeing your, seeing the same names crop up in the comments. It's really nice to know that, that we've got some good regular um, viewers here on the channel. Today I'm going to be printing again and I'm going to be um, combining a couple of products that I haven't used together on the gel plate before, hoping just to inspire you to experiment with other things that you might have at home and create some fun backgrounds. We're going to be creating this sort of abstract watercolour background using Distress Oxide inks and sprays. Now I'm going to be using some Lindy's sprays as well as some Dilution sprays and then uh, once we've created some backgrounds, today we're doing these on tags, um, we can finish them up with some ephemera or stamping and just create some really nice pretty tags. And these tags can be tucked into a journal, they could be mounted on a card, you could use them as a, a gift tag. Um, lots, lots of uses for tags, I know a lot of people like working on them, they're a nice size. Again, something you could pop in an envelope for happy mail um, to a crafty friend. So I'm going to clear these out of the way, get all set up with my plate and I'll show you how it's done. Today, once again, I'm using my 5 inch by 7 inch Jelly Art gel printing plate. Using this one because it's the perfect size um, for the substrate that I'm working on today, which are some tags. And these just fit really nicely on here. Um, these I have die cut using a Sizzix die it's one of the Tim Holtz alterations it's, it cuts a nice big tag but you know you can use some pre-cut tags um, cut your own this is a mixed media paper so I know it's going to stand up to the wet media that we're using but I'm sure if you've got some things like some manila parcel tags you could use those or just say just get some mixed media paper or watercolor paper and cut your own at the end of the day a tag shape is essentially a rectangle with a couple of corners lobbed off the top and a hole punched through so nice and easy and to so say these run to about sort of six and a half inches um, by about three inches so that's the size of my tags I've cut a few of those I'm going to be using Distress Oxides along with some spray um, inks and the colours I've chosen today, basically I am being guided by the sprays that I'm going to be using. So I have Evergreen Bow, Crushed Olive, Hickory Smoke and Vintage Photo because I am using some Lindy's Starburst sprays today and this is the Industrial Chic set. So we have... Um, Steel Shimmer, which is this sort of grey colour. Um, time Travel Teal, this a teal blue. Steampunk Sepia, obviously this sepia beige colour. Um, shabby Turbine Teal, which is a more green version. Um, we've got a, more of a green shade there and a blue shade there. And the last one is Rusty Lantern Lime. So as you can see, I've sort of coordinated my inks with my sprays. And I'm just going to be really creating some nice abstract, almost sort of watercolour feel backgrounds for these tags that we can then go on to embellish with some stamps or, or other embellishments on top. Again, just showing that it's not just paint that you can use on um, your gel plate and that you can mix different media together to create different effects and just get the most out of what you've got. You know, if you've got inks and sprays and a gel plate, mix and match, use them and create different effects. I've also got a brayer again today. This is just my Ranger rubber brayer again. Um, this is the one that's I think is about four inches across. I've got um, some water because I'll, I'll need to clean my brayer off in between using the inks just so I don't contaminate the ink pads. So I've just got a tray here um, that's got some water in. I could use a damp cloth but I'm just going to swill this in a tray of water and dry it um, on a towel in between different colours. I've got some kitchen paper and some water just to clean my plate off in between different um, tags but it's a really simple process nice and easy again and we'll just get on with it so i'm going to be using a couple of different colors of ink first of all on my plate so i'm using the hickory smoke here just going to apply some to my brayer and roll just a thin coating. You don't really see this. I mean, 
it's there but it's not obviously visible so you sort of kind of have to take my word for it that there is some ink there on the plate just going to clean that off my brayer in my water and then just sort of dry it off on my towel just using an old towel there because I don't want to roll that color ink onto the ink pad that I'm using next and this one's the crushed olive that I'm using this time so I've got um, my gray ink here I've got my green ink here I'm going to choose a couple of colors of these um, sprays give them a shake up these ones the Lindy's have some mica in them so just giving them a bit of a shake to mix them and I'm not going to be spritzing I'm going to be sort of splattering so I'm going to unscrew the lid and splatter some ink onto my gel plate it'll give me a sort of a more textured finish and it is less likely to, to coat the whole thing. I have a little bit more um, options for placement of where I want the colours. So that was the um, steel shimmer. And I'm going to use the time travel teal again. Give them a bit of a shake up because uh, the mica in these settles down to the bottom. And what else? I'm going to use one more colour. I think I'm going to use this steampunk sepia. Give that a bit of a shake up. And splatter some of that on there. I'm going to take one of my tags, place that down onto the plate and because I don't want to get ink all over my fingers while I'm doing this I'm just going to take a piece of paper this is just a piece of uh, printer paper just to put down over the top so that I can rub firmly over there without getting quite so much um, of the ink all over me could wear a pair of gloves I don't particularly like wearing gloves to work in unless I absolutely have to so just remove that and then we can lift up our tag and as you see we get this nice mottled sort of watercolour effect and um, with the blending of the different colours and some nice texture in there. Before moving on to do another one we just need to clean off any residual colour because it'll start to get a bit muddied and contaminated if we don't. So just a spritz of water and a quick wipe over. and we're ready to go again and this time I'm going to use the vintage photo first so I'm just going to apply some of that Give my brayer a quick clean off and I'm going to use the evergreen bow. So again we'll move on to using some of the sprays. So I'll try this rusty lantern lime.
I'm going to use the time travel teal. And I think I'm going to use the shabby turbine teal. Once again, I'm going to take one of my tags and place that down on the plate. Take my scrap of paper and then press down to transfer all that ink onto my tag. And again, a beautiful sort of mottled um, background, really nice mix of colours. I like the fact you never really quite know what you're going to get with this at all. This is completely sort of unplanned um, while we're working on the plate this way. So there may be some of you out there that are thinking, I don't have Lindy's sprays. Is there something else that I could use? So maybe you've got something that's more just like the Dilutions um, sprays. Again, it's a dye-based spray. These don't have any mica in them. They, they don't have any shimmer. But I've pulled out three colours again that I sort of in the same colour palette that I'm using, so I don't have to go and find some more Distress Oxide inks. Let's give these a whirl and see what sort of results we can get with these. So once again, I'm going to begin by applying some Distress Oxide. This is Evergreen Bow. So let's just pop some, some of that on our plate. Just rinse my brayer off. Give that a quick dry. And I think um, I'll use the crushed olive along with this this time and apply some of that to this side. Again, still going to go with the splattering effect. I've pulled out here um, Vibrant Turquoise, Dirty Martini and Slate Grey. I have a lot of the very bright sort of pinks and oranges and yellows, but they're not going to go with the Distress Oxide inks that I've got. So I've just sort of gone with the similar colours that we've already been using. And again, just going to splatter rather than spray just to create some texture on there i'm going to use all three colors And then exactly as we did before, take my tag, place that down on the plate, get my scrap of paper and press down. And there we go. As you see, we've got more of a defined um, design. It hasn't like run in as much as it did with the Lindy's. Let's try again. Um, see if what if we put more ink on there. If we can create a more blended effect. But obviously, the individual makeup of each of the sprays it's going to create slightly different um, results on your plate. I'm 
I'm going to use vintage photo. And hickory smoke. And again, just applying these dilutions, spray inks. Taking my tag, placing that down on the plate, and pressing down firmly. There, we've got a slightly less defined um, image this time because I put more of the, the Dilusions inks on. But I think you can see they react slightly differently to the Lindy's. The Lindy's blend much more with the background. But Lindy's sprays, they come to you as, a, as just the dry mica and you add water um, to the to the actual bottle yourself, whereas the Dilusions come ready mixed. So. Obviously, the, the makeup of the spray itself is slightly different, which is what gives you a slightly different result. But the point of this is experiment with what you've got. You're going to get different results with different brands. Um, and, and it's just a nice, unexpected way of experimenting with different products. So I'm going to clear this away and put some detail onto my tags just to show you what you can actually do with the backgrounds that we've created today. So I've spent a little bit of time just to finish off these tags to show you what you can use your backgrounds for. And I've done a mixture of stamping and collage because I'm sure that, you know, if you don't stamp, if you don't have stamps, I'm sure you've got some ephemera or some collage images. If you don't have the collage, you've probably got some stamps. If not, you could always illustrate, you, you know, there's, there's lots of different things that you can do um, with the backgrounds that you've created. So first up, these were the two that I used the Lindy's sprays on. This one I've added um, some stamping. So this is a Lavinia stamp at the bottom. Just added a bit of colour with some pencils and some highlights with a white paint pen. And the sentiment stamp is one by the Ink Road. Um, they have a Disney set, I believe it's called Irresistible. Um, and that, that's from that set there. Just added a bit of blue ink around the edge and some sari ribbon at the top. The other background that we created with the Lindy's sprays stamped some birds in the background. Again, this is a Lavinia stamp, just stamped that in a sepia because I wanted it to tone with the piece of ephemera that I was using. Um, all the ephemera I've got is from the ideology range, the, the Tim Holtz ideology range. So this was um, one of their packs of like nature ephemera and a little chipboard quote as well. Again, inked around the edge, bit of sari ribbon at the top just to finish that off. Then we move on to the two that we used the Dilutions ink sprays. Um, this one here just used um, Lavinia stamps again, one of their fairies and these lovely hanging lanterns. Added a few bit of colour to the lanterns again with pencil and a white pen. At the bottom this is just a sentiment sticker 
Um, I think it's a 13 arts one, just on a clear background. So it looks like it's stamped, but it's, it's just a sticker that's been applied. And again, sorry ribbon at the top, bit of ink around the edge. I also die cut an oval that I used as a mask and just inked around it, just to spotlight that fairy a little bit on there. And finally, another one here with some ideology um, ephemera. This um, pack has a lot of sort of labels and, and ledger type um, bits of ephemera in. One of the chipboard dolls and a chipboard quote. Bit of ink, bit of sari ribbon and another finished tag for you. So hopefully that's just shown you, you know, the sort of things you can do with these backgrounds that you've created. Obviously, if you're printing onto something other than a tag, if you're printing onto a square um, piece of card or a rectangular piece of card, you could use that as a greetings card background, um, a postcard background. You could print directly onto a journal if you're quite careful about the way you, you manhandle your journal. Lots of different things, again, but always just trying to look for ideas of different products to use with your gel plate, different things that you can combine together, and then just showing you some ways that you can use those prints in a finished project. As always, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up and I shall see you again next week with something else. Bye. I'm feeling way too low to start this night.